Hey guys, today we take a look at everything coming in Season 8 of Clash Royale and beyond, including new skins and emotes, new balances, as well as a few hints on what may be coming in, perhaps the March update of Clash Royale. All that and more in today's episode of Clash World. Hey guys, Legend right here, and welcome back to another episode of Clash World. In this weekly show, we take a look at the most recent announcements from the Clash Royale team, the hottest topics in CR Esports, as well as what's going on in the community. Then, we'll finish off the episode by breaking down the meta and featuring my off-meta, Deck of the Week. If you're enjoying Clash World, then please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified of every new video that comes out. Also, go check me out on Instagram and Twitter, and if you'd like to support me, use my creator code in your Clash Royale shop. And with that out of the way, let's get right into the first section, New in the Arena. New in the Arena is where we find out about what the Supercell team has been up to this past week. And as with the close of each month, Season 8 is just around the corner, arriving on Monday, February 3rd. The new season's theme is Return to Legendary, which I admit isn't the best name for a season, but then again, there aren't too many major holidays in February. Now this season does come with a new Log Tower skin unlocked at tier 10 of Pass Royale, as well as three new emotes, which I all think are really, really cool. Of the three, the Royal Ghost is the one unlocked through Pass Royale, and honestly, I absolutely love these emos. Now, I admit, we're not getting a new arena, and that kind of is a bummer, but hey, it's been a while since we've had the good old legendary arena, and I think Clash Royale is working on something big for March, so and in the meanwhile, it's also pretty cool to have that nice blue theme on the main screen one more time. Next up, of course, with new seasons, will also be balances. Now, this is an interesting set of balance changes for sure, as the meta has been pretty alright this month, with really not a single card that particularly was overpowered and dominating. Therefore, we're getting an all buff balance update, with four cards seeing small to medium adjustments. Let's take a look. Zappies, damage plus 20%, hit speed from 1.6 to 2 seconds, faster first attack speed, and a staggered deploy time. Oh my god, that was a mouthful. Now this is a pretty wacky change to the Zappies. Overall, they pretty much do the same amount of damage, but they just hit a little bit slower. However, as an exchange for the slower attack speed, they'll have a faster first attack, meaning that finally, they're able to get that shot off on the Princes before they get destroyed by that charge. Overall, I think it's a really good change, and hey, maybe the Zappies will see an increase in usage, especially in Fireball Bait decks, especially combined with the balances that I'll go over right now. Royal Hogs. Damage plus 6%. Oh man, the Royal Hogs have always been a card that are just super underrated, but this meta, with all the Mega Knights, Bomb Towers, and Splashers galore, well, these boys just ain't doing so hot. Therefore, this damage increase means that the Royal Hogs will be seeing a very slight increase in effectiveness, and I think in combination with the Zappies rework and 3 Musketeer change, this may breathe a little bit more life into the split lane archetype as a whole. Barbarian Hut Building lifetime reduced from 60 seconds to 50 seconds, Barbarian spawn time reduced from 13 and a half to 12 and a half seconds, and now spawns two death Barbarians. So ever since Supercell reworked the Barbarians a long time ago, the Barb Hut just hasn't been the same. And again, with all the splashers in this meta, it's just not a very good card whatsoever. Basically, this change means that the Barbarian Hut will spawn 10 Barbarians, just like it does before, but now, It'll only spawn 8 Barbarians during its normal lifetime, and then 2 more as a death spawn. Now this is interesting, because the Barb Hut will now become a bit more spell resistant, since, you know, even if you rocket it out, it's still going to spawn those 2 final Barbarians. Combining that with those faster spawn rates, it's gonna require a bit more of a response on offense, and also spawn those Barbarians faster for defensive purposes. So overall, I think it's a really good change, and I'm looking forward to trying out some spawner decks once again. Which faster first attack from 1 to 0.7 seconds. Now this one is interesting because it's not too big of a change overall, so I don't think it'll have too large of an effect, but basically the witch's slow first attack made her really weak against swarms, which was actually something that the witch was supposed to be good at taking out. Therefore, the faster first attack will help with that just a little bit. 
Overall, I think these balances are pretty decent. I mean, it's nothing crazy, but then again, there weren't too many issues in the meta that needed fixing either. Other than that, there hasn't been too much update-wise, but I really think that March will be a major update, and hopefully it'll have something to do with Clan Wars. We also know there's a heal spell rework that might possibly come in March, but come on Supercell, give us something big. Anyways, aside from that, that's gonna do it for new in the arena, let's get right into the esports update. The esports update is a section where we go over recent esports events as well as new and rising pro players. This week, while not much has been going on on the big esports side of things, Boss CR has recently proposed the organization of a content creator bracket, similar to kind of like a King's Cup style event where a content creator teams up with a pro and plays in a bracketed tournament against other content creator and pro duos. I absolutely love this idea and hey, who knows, maybe that's something that you guys can look forward to watching in the near future. Anyways, now that we're caught up on the most recent esports news, let's check out the rising rumors. So here's a concept by you slash, uh, that's a really long name, I'm not gonna read it, on the Reddit, and it's a new casual mode with custom maps. I personally think this is an absolutely amazing idea. You know, it would just mainly be a casual mode for players, but I feel like this change of gameplay and strategy that could come with these different maps may just be that kind of breath of fresh air that a lot of clashers are looking for right now. So I feel like these new maps not only open up a new style of gameplay, but it also opens up opportunities for players to submit custom maps and stuff like that, which also improves the community aspect of the game as a whole. Finally, here's a fun clip by Pete H12, where a wall breaker decides to question his purpose and not die. I mean, that bomb was just about to drop, and then he was like, nope. Anyways, now that we've covered the trending topics in the community, let's go ahead and break down the meta. Now since balances are coming into effect on Tuesday, February 5th, I'll be making my predictions on how this balance change will affect the meta. It wasn't a very big balance, I'll admit, but let's go ahead and break it down. Fireball bait. I think the big thing this next month is going to be the rise of fireball bait with buffs to both zappies and the royal hogs and adding on to the fact that the magic archer is super good already. These players who can play Royal Hogs will absolutely thrive in this meta. Aside from that, I don't think the meta will change that much to be honest. You know, just like this month's meta, it'll mainly be dominated by, you know, P.E.K.K.A. Control or Bridge Bam, as well as graveyard decks such as Splash Yard. Minor Cycle is also going to be very popular as well, especially comboed with the Wall Breakers, and so will Balloon Cycle decks, and, you know, if Fireball Bait does become meta, Oh boy, are we going to see a lot more Mega Knights and a lot more Bomb Towers. Anyways, that's going to be the meta for you guys. Now let's check out the off meta deck of the week. This week's deck was submitted by Trillers Games and it's a P.E.K.K.A. Mortar Miner deck. This deck is very, very interesting for sure. It's got aspects of P.E.K.K.A. Control as well as Mortar Bait all mixed together into a crazy deck. Now with this deck, it's a decently fast deck. 3.5 has the capabilities of cycling a bit faster. Overall, just play decently aggressive, but not too much that you'll overcommit. And without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into a match. Alrighty, so looks like this match here is going to be against Dark Hood. So good luck to this guy starting off here. Minor into that safe spot. He will not be able to get a King's activation no matter what. He's gonna go in with a Magic Archer, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fireball that out. I think I missed it. Oh, I am a big, I am a retard. Okay. <laughs> oh, hopefully. Oh my gosh, what the heck is this guy running? Okay, we're just gonna go log that out. That should be just fine. We're gonna go ahead and use a fisherman as well. Maybe that'll get a king activation. I'm hoping so. Come on, come on, give me that king activation. There we go. Let's go. And uh, so yeah, we kind of made up for that misplay there with a king's tower activation using that fisherman. So anyways, here that fisherman, you know, recently got buffed as you can see. Ah, oh, okay. Well, it almost got a hit onto the tower, but I don't think he has a. Um, uh, a NATO or any way to activate King, so I'll Miner in the back, catch him off guard, and there we go. He had to use a Snowball and then an E-Wiz right there. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. I'll take it, and looks like it's going to be once again uh, with that stuff right there. And I am so bad at this game. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> 
man, I don't know what I'm doing today. I am just not on my game. But it looks like we're still fine. The activated King's Tower is just putting in work. So here, uh, okay, Fisherman still doesn't get anything on the tower, but he still doesn't know that I have a P.E.K.K.A. That's that's the big thing. P.E.K.K.A. will just absolutely shut down his Hog Rider. So anyways here, we're going to minor over here, switching up our placements. And okay, we're going to have to... Uh, plop this P.E.K.K.A. down right there, and uh, Giant Skeleton Hog Rider. That is a weird deck for sure. Two weird decks facing off against each other. Let's see how it's going to end up. The P.E.K.K.A. will obviously win this one-on-one -on -one battle, uh, and we're just going to fireball that out right there. Ooh, we got the E-Wiz as well. That is big dubs right there for us. Uh, let's see here. Let's go with the Firecracker. And that firecracker was misplayed because it's going to go opposite lane. So let's try and make the most of it and send in a miner as well. There we go. And uh, yeah, there we go. The firecracker might take out some of those skeletons as well. So and uh, that was pretty good. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. And uh, yeah, anyways, let's just go ahead and go in with another uh, P.E.K.K.A. right there in the back matching his giant skeleton. Now here, I'm just going to go ahead and fisherman that hog all the way over here. That, that might get a hit because of that earthquake slowing down the fisherman. But that is perfectly fine. It's actually going to uh, pull that giant skeleton over, uh, which I guess will be in my favor because... Um yeah, that P.E.K.K.A. is just going to go straight over there, and uh, let's see here, Mortar is going to lock onto the tower, there we go, and uh, yeah, we're actually going to risk it right here, let's go with the P.E.K.K.A., oh, that, that, uh, I lagged a little bit right there, unfortunately, that is going to mm, not be, not be ideal right there, but... Luckily, looks like we are just fine. There we go. He's actually required to... Okay, he barely got to the skeletons right there. Uh, but yeah, the P.E.K.K.A. is still going to connect onto the tower. Let's go with a firecracker right there. And... Um yeah, that should do a good job right there. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and Miner and then Mortar once again. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and Fireball as well. That Mortar should be locked on. No, okay, looks like it is uh, attached onto all of this stuff right here. Let's go with that on. Uh, okay, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad, guys. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, that, that Fisherman better pull the hog before that bomb blows. Okay, we're, we're, we're good there. We're good there. So let's go ahead and go in with a Mortar right there. And uh, let's see here. He's going to go ahead and use that right there. Let's go ahead P.E.K.K.A. right there, predicting a Magic Archer. Yep, there it is. Let's go ahead and Fireball that out as well. There we go. And that should be a Mortal Lock, maybe? No? Okay. Oh, wow, that is a Mortal Lock. Okay, there we go. And uh, yeah, let's get ready here. Uh, Fisherman will pull all this stuff out. Uh, Miner right there hopefully does not catch that placement. And that is going to be GG well played. That was a really, really stretched out match. Lots of misplays. But as you can see, we are still able to basically control that whole match. So there we go, guys. That was the off minute deck of the week. Definitely recommend you guys give the deck a try. You know, the slower version of Siege isn't as popular, but that doesn't mean it can't be effective. If you want to submit your own deck to be featured, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. But unfortunately, guys, that's all I've got time for in today's episode. If you enjoyed, please leave a like down below as well as a subscription to my channel. And as always, this is Legendary Ray, and I'm signing off. See you guys next time.